Boom, what's happening out there, everybody? Good to see you. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Hope everybody's doing all right. I know I'm one minute past. Oh, yeah, 25 push ups for being a little late. This is Little Top. And, uh, happy fucking Saturday. Hope you had a good weekend. Got your yard work done and such. Oh, my man, Steve Gallagher. I apologize to you, buddy. I know I'm always sneaking up on you and giving these live shows and not letting you know. So I want everybody to hear officially that I apologize to my man, Gallagher. Hope you're doing all right. Glad your mama's doing better, buddy. All right, what's up, J-Rock, John Lane, all the way, airborne, all the way. Good to see you. All right. Be a good Saturday. What's happening, Ken? Good to see you, my man, Eric. How's it going? It's going pretty good here. We going all right. I had a good weekend so far. Drank a couple cold beers. Did a little shop work. Ran some errands. Helped people out. Everything's going pretty good. How about y'all? What y'all been up to? Well, I, know, I know what Steve's been up to. He's been hustling around. Like a one-legged cat shitting on an ice pond. Hopefully it's calming down for you something now, buddy. Hope everything's all right. We uh, been, we got something we got to talk about right now. I'm going to wait till a couple people chime in here, but if y'all are on here already, let me know what your thoughts on us taking a couple shots at old Syria. How many of y'all think we, we, we about to launch into a whole nother Cold War, and that's at best. So I want to hear what y'all have to think about that. Woke up this morning, turned it on, bazing. All right, Eric, drinking that cold Corona, son. You got fishing. How was the fishing? Did you catch anything? You got a whole bucket full of spot. That's what I'm saying, John. Let's talk about some Syria. I'm curious to hear what y'all think. I'll, I'll go ahead and give you my thoughts on it right out of the gate. I mean, fair's fair. I mean, I, I feel like the least I can do is, you know, let you know just so y'all understand where I'm coming from and such. Number one. Bow. I know that we have warned the, the Assad regime many times about using chemical weapons, right? About 50, 11 times we done warned them. They keep on doing it. We try to turn the cold, turn the shoulder, like maybe, you know, do the right thing, give them another chance, and over and over again, them son of bitches keep using it. Well, I don't have a problem with us squeezing the trigger, but don't think there ain't going to be repercussions. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. There will be repercussions. So I'm really standing by every day, watching the news all day, waiting for some shit. If shit's going to happen, it's going to happen this evening. So I'm curious to see if Russia does anything. I hope they don't do anything directed at American Joes. Because if Russia does anything directed straight at Joes, whew, son, we're going to be in a bind. That's a game changer. Right there. Nestor says he might be going to Syria. You might. You might be. I'd say start stretching. Check them deployment bags. That's all I'm saying. Cheers to JRTC, my man down there, Daniel. Hey, you know Captain Leger down there, Daniel? Captain Leger, Captain Ben Leger. He works somewhere down there. I know there's about a thousand of you boys working at JRTC. Just wonder if you knew him. Scott's a camp cook? No shit. Man, I went to, uh, man, I went to, uh, well, it wasn't BLC back then. It was b -knock. I went to Beanock Phase 1 at Camp Cook. That's a cool little place down there. Tiniest little army base you ever been to. Like on Camp. Camp Cook. Let's see. Alright, good to you. Your mama's doing alright, my man, Steve. Well, hang in there, buddy. Get a Whoa, ladies and gentlemen. We we got a we got a VIP here. It looks like we got Mr. Rick Strainy. EOD extraordinaire with word on the street is the most beautiful hair in the Navy. And I'm not saying, I'm just saying that's what I heard. How you doing, Strainy? You doing all right? Looking forward to, looking forward to seeing you, my man. Yeah, are you going to be down there in Florida next month? Because I was working on some stuff for, for all you EOD boys today. I was working on something so I can throw it in that auction. Whoa. Trump said dad is home. It ain't never a good deal when daddy gets home. <laughs> this is your words. I, I just read it in a port of john I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's true. I just thought I'd throw it out there to be discussed. I mean. 
I bet you are busy right now. I bet there's a lot of people around around this um, military organization that are hopping right now, trying to figure out what what's going on. Anything I can do for you, stranger? You know, you know, I'll do it. So just holler at me. Let me know. Let's see. Jericho said he's way, supposed to be going to keep the Russians from starting shit. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a good time. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Straight, you everywhere straight he goes. You just write how beautiful your hair is in the shitter. Respectfully, respectfully. I don't feel like you have to say it. You just gotta see your pictures. For those of us who are um hair follicle challenged, I only wish I had a beautiful set of hair like that. Congratulations, sir. Well, yeah, I uh, I, I, you know, I'm I'm curious to see going to going to Europe and keep the Russians from starting shit. Now you understand it was only about a year and a half ago. I was training with all the mute, the boys from over in the um, Ukraine boys and uh, some of the other Eastern Bloc, former Soviet Union cats who were right on the border, pretty damn nervous about how the Russians are acting. It's kind of like when you got that big kid at the end of the block. You know he's going to start some shit. You just kind of biding time, waiting for it to happen. It's an uncomfortable feeling. You know what I'm saying? What's happening, my man, William? How you doing all right? No, I wasn't at Benning. You talking to me? Straight, are you talking to me about being at Benning? No, I wasn't at Benning. I was um, I was over at, uh, what is it, uh, GRM, JRMTC over there at Hohensfeld in Germany. I did that, that uh, fall right, you know, I guess that was fall of, let's see, shit, 17, it's fall of 16, I was over there. And there's a pretty good guys. It's interesting when you start working with some of them other countries. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, they got some strengths, and they got some weaknesses. And I, I, all I know is about the cats I dealt with don't understand the what's called fire discipline. You know, we hammered in these Joes, three to five round burst, fucking make the machine guns talk at the, at the team level. These are all infantry tactics. I'm just saying, I had a kid like running through a belt in his RPK, sweet Jesus. We're like, cease fire, Jesus, cease fire. He just kept laughing. He had like four teeth in his mouth. That's a true story. Hope some of my boys saw that. Remember it. Oh, Ken, I'm looking forward to see all that beautiful hair down there. I might make a special gallery on Little Top's page. All of the beautiful EOD hair I met on that whole trip. See, I'm not surprised that Saab wants to poke the bear. Well, well you know what? Saab's in like, a Saab wants Russia like knee deep in his shit because them rebels about handed him his ass and again you know a lot of that old syria thing i this sounds crazy i mean a lot of y'all knew this and i won't get the detail but i got friends i grew up whose family came from syria and then they were great people i mean they good people and that was a beautiful country that place is reduced to rubble why because it's, it's in an intersection of bad shit and it's a shame it's happening but it is happening. And I know right now, we got Joes on the ground right now. I know for a fact we got some Ranger Battalion. I know we got some EOD techs. I know we got some other light infantry, maybe second ID, some striker. I've seen them cats over there. It's not all over the news, but we got American boys on that soil. Don't think that ain't happening. And that's my biggest worry is that Rush is going to turn around and take a lick at some of my partners. And I start getting all worked up and shit. I start stretching, whip some putin ass. All right, let's see. Yeah, that yeah, that big kid, I mean, the problem is that big kid starts shit. Well, guess what? There's another big kid at the other end of the block. You know what I'm saying? And then for those of y'all that ain't old enough, you know, I lived through the Cold War. I did the, the nuclear reaction and fucking drills in elementary school. I remember that shit. We had one bad guy, Soviet Union. That's it. Well, I got the Panama in 89. I'm sitting there... They're looking at the Panama Canal is some pretty cool shit and smooth. Here comes a fucking Soviet boat with a Russian sickle cruising right through that bitch. It's crazy. Crazy. Uh, so it, 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 it's a little tense when you got another big boy on the block and it's almost like you're just staring at each other over the fence waiting for shit to go down. I hope it don't get like that again. I think Putin's poking the bear seeing what he can get away with. All right, let's see what we're saying here. Yeah, there are lots of a lot, lots of bad actors out there. I agree with you, Sfanny. A lot of bad boys out there wanting to play ball. 
And the other problem is we got there's all kinds of variables out in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got to remember, remember the Asian Spring. Oh, they're going to, we, we, they're going to rise up and they're going to take back their countries. What happened was they had a bunch of people riding on a motion with no fucking plan. That shit can go bad. That's how people roll in and take over your shit. Like you might have heard of ISIS. Yeah, that shit happened because didn't nobody have a plan. There's always a bigger kid. Yep, push it sub guy versus the punch you in the <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's hope it don't get all down to that. Who? Let's hope this. Uh, let's hope this shit just calms down and po- and Putin don't want to keep poking the bear. And I mean, I feel like it, I feel like it's our job if we if we have confirmed that they have used chemical weapons. I mean, this ain't new news. If you use chemical weapons and shit, then you know. You know what the reaction's going to be. Don't be sitting around saying, oh, I wonder what they're, oh, why are they so mad? Why are they bullshit? You know exactly why they mad. Chemical weapons are no-no, boys. They've been a no-no for a long time. So don't go playing stupid. And I think the right thing to do is to shut them down. I'm just saying. I know, it, I, I know it's difficult. That's just my thoughts. <laughs> Let's see what else we got on here. What's up, Sergeant Hutch? I hope, I hope you're doing all right. I mean, I know everybody paid attention to, y'all read those articles about the, um, uh, what is it, the, the Russian, um, there's cats, like, there's a civilian military force, I can't remember the name of the organization, it was kind of like Blackwater was back in the day, but Blackwater was always on that security element side, right? From what I understand, these cats, it was kind of the Russian counterpart to that, but also they put, they're getting put in offensive operations. So word on the street is, they got a call from Russia, and they sent them on over, and I said, go and hit that American base. You remember this a couple weeks ago? And the U.S. handed them that ass. And I feel like that somebody's just probing the perimeter. Want to know if we're soft or not, if we're going to lick back. That's what it feels like. What's up, Laura? Be doing all right? What's up, Adam? Doing good? All going good here, Hutch. Good here. Hope you're doing all right. Civilian. What you talking about, Daniel? So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, I mean, honestly, Steve wants to know why we can't take out Assad. We probably can't take out Assad. The slippery slope is that Russia has smooth stepped in and supported that government. And and this is another thing that everybody may not want to talk about. If what's happening in Syria does not fall under the global war on terror, am I wrong about this? This is my one concern. I know that after 9-11, we pretty much rolled everything up into a nice bundle. If we felt like you fell into a global war on terror, it gives the president and everybody, you know, car blanche, you can do whatever you like. Bring the shutdown. Is that happening in Syria? That's what I'm wondering about. Is support of a rebel group against the, the government that was there, does that fall under that? If so, do we have the right to just jump into somebody else's shit? Kind of feels a little bit like Vietnam. I'm just saying, we got Russia on one side of them supporting one group, and here we come rolling in on the other side. You know, if y'all study your history, that's exactly what it sounds like to me. I'm just saying. Roger Daniels, a civilian security force. All right, Adam, well, that's good. Let's see. All right, sorry, I got to catch up on all these things. I get on my soapbox. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure Russia does want instability. Why? Because then, then it gives them more. You know, they can exercise their free will. They probably want um, weak governments around them. You know, my concern. You, if y'all remember when the Soviet Union fell, everybody was celebrating. But what you you got to remember is that there's countries like Latvia, Kazakhstan, and a lot of these other countries that the Soviet Union folded back into Russia and left these countries fully nuclear capable. And I'm wrong. Like the, I mean, some, some of you EOD boys, are, are we not dealing with some kind of sketch countries that are nuclear capable? Man, that's kind of scary. It's kind of like leaving a shotgun in with your idiot, you know, younger cousin who don't really know what he's doing with that bad boy. I just think it's a slippery slope. It's, it's messy over there. Yeah, I agree with you, Ken. I agree it's coming across like a Vietnam, Afghanistan. It's crazy. 
hot mess. Hot mess what it is. And I don't want to see us get ramped up into that shit. I'm an old bald fuck. Let me tell you something. I remember, though, when there was a time when we weren't at war. How many people on this right now remember when we weren't at war? Remember? Remember when you were in the Army and all you did was just train? Sad thing is, you know, when you were young Joe, then you're like, oh, man, I wish we at war. Well, you, well no, nobody realized we were going to have 15 years of constant rotations rolling through this bitch. You know how many Joes have rolled through Duncom? We probably got more walking around combat veterans in the United States than we ever have maybe since Vietnam. Maybe, maybe, I mean, World War II, a whole lot of Joes went in one big, you know, 41 to 45, one big push. But I'm saying we've been rolling Joes steadily through both Iraq and Afghanistan overseas for a long time. I'd like to see the numbers on that. Any y'all got any stats, send that to me in my email. Let's see, Peacetime Army. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Long, long time ago. What you want to talk about sideburns? Michael said he enlisted after Desert Storm in Germany. Ford Carter, well, it wasn't even that. I mean, shit. I, you know, I joined the Army in 88. I'll be honest. I, I was just waiting for Red Dawn to happen at any minute, but I never really thought we'd see some shit happen. Then you can ask Sergeant Hutch. We were at NTC, National Training Center, right in the desert in California, and we got the word that uh, Saddam rolled on Kuwait. Remember that, Hutch? That was crazy. And guess what? From pretty much that point on, we've been sending Joes all over the world. <laughs> That's true, too. Strange so says, he doesn't know what, what it's like. Half the million doesn't know what it's like with the budget. Yeah, yeah. When we roll, here are my thoughts. I've seen the Army with no money. And I've seen the army with so much money, we don't know what to do with it. Trust me, it's a lot nicer when you got a lot of money. But you remember on the front end, you know, when we rolled into Iraq the first time, man, they were welding plates to the side of them vehicles. Whoa, first start Chad Check Snyder. All the way, top, all the way. Good to see you on here. I don't see Shaky on here much. Shaky remembers when, we, when there really wasn't a war going on. Me and Shaky were E4s together back in the day in that mortal platoon. It's crazy. Red Dawn, that was my jam. You know, Michael, and I'm not talking about the shitty second Red Dawn. I'm talking about the Red Dawn with the Sways. You can't compare the Red Dawns when the Sways is in the first one. I say we take a moment of silence for the Sways. All the way, Sways, all the way. Yep. No, not the fucking remake. The only good thing about the remake is it has a Thor guy in there. Other than that, the casting was shit. I could have walked around my neighborhood and cast that movie better than that. And the kid who was the hero, he was soft like mama's ass. Always pisses me off. At least in the original Red Dawn, you got Thomas J. Howe, whatever his name is, just ready to kill everybody. And you got the Sways. I mean, you had a set of boys who are at least ready to throw down. Uh, let's see if I can catch up on here. Let's see. Brian said he built Drift with Sharp. Brian, you crack me up. My brother, Taylor King, who never gets on here, when I took off for the for the Army, Taylor used to always have sharpened sticks around, the, you know, just in case, just in case them Russians come. Taylor, if you ever see this, you, you need to meet my boy Brian on here because I think he was your counterpart doing the same thing somewhere else in the U.S. Yes, remake does suck. Let's see. Well, at least we all agree on how shitty the remake of Red Dawn was. And it took them forever to do that bitch, too. Didn't they start out and it was like Korea? Then they had to change it to something else? Or I can't know. Maybe they started out and it was China. And then they had to make it Korea. I don't remember. I just know since I was a little kid, I've been dreaming of some shit like that. Dare to be great situation. Country's divided. America stands alone. Sharpening sticks with some of your partners sitting up ambushes. Fuck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That'd be good times. <clears throat> be kind of nice to be on the other end of that. Make some other Joes go rolling down a road. You hit them at your discretion. I imagine any other farted dust overseas know what it's like being on the other side. It's like being launched into a pinball game. How many of y'all came down from the north side 
into Baghdad, like out of Balad and what's all up there, um, Taji and all up there, when you're coming down, heading south, as soon as you get on the north side of Baghdad, the only way to compare it is getting shoot to a pinball machine. And sooner or later, like everything's getting hit in there. It's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Looking straight at Taylor was also a pain in the ass. <laughs> In case y'all didn't know, my man Stranny here and my brother spend a little time together in service. So, I like watching people bust on my brother. Cracks me the fuck up. That's who I base that character Do Milligan on, old Taylor King. I think they ought to bring some of us in. Let us, let us make a movie. Did I ever tell you all about the time that I ran into that cat over in Germany? And he was from Georgia, the country, part of the far Soviet Union, and he was, he was the same age as me. So I asked him when he came in, came in in 88. I'm like, no shit. I said, you know what? My first permanent duty station, I used to study all your vehicles. And this dude's like, I used to study your vehicles. I'm like, no shit. So we sat there bullshitting a while, and eventually I say, hey, man, you ever seen that movie Red Dawn? He's like, what is this Red Dawn? I said, well, that's when y'all jumped in and attacked us, and we kicked that ass. We got all flustered. He's like, well, I want to see this Red Dawn. I'm like, yeah, you get it, hero. You can find it for $3 at the Walmart bin. It's a piece of cinematic excellence. I wonder what that dude's doing now. He's probably nervous as the fuck with Russia starting shit over there. That's all I'm saying. Alright, let's see. Let me try and catch up. Jacked up True Grit. You know, I'll be honest with you. See, man, I ain't seen the new two True Grit. Does it suck? You know, okay. This is an old movie. But I'm going to say right now. The Longest Day in Black and White is one of my favorite World War II movies. And I recognize it's black and white, but it's a star-studded cast. I want to see them remake The Longest Day. They had John Wayne, Peter Fonda, Sean Connery, man. That thing was stacked with cats. I watched it the other day, and the funny thing is, is that Sean Connery ain't even the coolest. The Duke was running the show. I don't know, it's a good movie. Y'all check out The Longest Day. You ain't never seen it. So he says, don't engage Taylor in a one-liner war. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my brother's a smart ass. And he's quick out of the gate. But that's mostly, I'll tell you why. Because no, how no matter how clever I thought I was or my brother thought he was, our old man was always one step ahead of us. So, you know, are you thinking, oh, I'm setting him up. Oh, here we go. Boy, I'll be alley-ooping him, him to fail. And then I try and sink the hook, and in a split second realize I'm the dumbass, and he was just egging me on the whole time. So if Taylor's quick, it's mostly because he grew up in a house having to defend himself at dinner trying to argue with our dad. He was a quick, smart son of a bitch. It was rough. It was rough times. I'm not sure I ever got one on him. The funny thing is, when Dad passed away, well, um, when we were sitting up there, we hadn't spoke at his funeral. Taylor said, well, this was pretty much the only way that I knew I could get the last word. And everybody laughed. It was a good time. Miss that old man. Right, let's see. What else we got going on? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you saying sucks, Hutch? You saying the longest day sucks? Y'all crazy. Or what are you talking about? Oh, the True Grit, maybe. Let's hope you're talking about True Grit. It's hard to sit here and talk to y'all like, because like, you know there's like about a three or four second delay. So if it seems like I wait a second to respond to y'all's comments, that's because it takes a second for it to come through. And to be honest with you, I, I, I don't even know how to make it any better. I'm doing the best I can. All right. Oh, yeah. Cheers to the old man. He was a good old man. Ever tell you that, like, so when I decided to join the Army, that uh, I, I saw that ad in the send off for a free Army t shirt. Then I got the call from the recruiter, went and saw me, showed me the damn airborne tape, and then I just did it, didn't tell my dad till we were at dinner that night. Well, that was an interesting conversation. The good news, I mean, quite honestly, it was the best thing I probably ever did. I know, you know, I look on Facebook and I see all these young Joes bitching about their time and service. Well, you know, God only knows what, what I'd have gotten into had I not decided to go ahead and out and join the Army. I have no idea where I'd be. Probably in a whole lot of troubles where I'd be. Uh, people like my man Sergeant Hutchins on here, Sergeant Han, 
Sergeant Hunt, Sergeant Miller. I mean, I can go on and on. People that, you know, handed me my ass a little bit, try to figure it out this life. Worked well for me, both the military and civilian world. I'm tracking Ken, talking about that cheer, that true grit. Oh, let's see. What's out there in Arizona? What's out? What's up, Garrett, out there in Arizona? Hey, where's that Burning Man shit? Is that out there in Arizona? If so, anybody on here ever went to the Burning Man where you go out there and everybody don't hardly wear no clothes and you light shit on fire at night? I was looking at some pictures out there. I know there's a veterans group that meets out there. They all get together and don't wear no clothes and burn shit. Sounds like a good time to me. If y'all, any y'all ever been to Burning Man, let me know what that's like. Or is there, is there a bunch of hippies out there making sweet love? I'm just curious. They asked me a couple years ago and I sent some of my art out there and shit. Speaking of, hey, did y'all see on my page where I got them little cutouts? Put them up on my, uh, in my office up above on that shelf. These things look awesome. Got everybody. Got you up there, Gallagher. Got everybody up there that's on the Patreon page. Ain't in Arizona. Is that what you do in your backyard, Ken? Ken goes to his backyard, gets naked, burned shit. <laughs> I'm down. Let's watch this happen. Sit rep. Well, of course it's windy in Oklahoma. It's always windy. That's why I have to fucking buildings get blown down once a year. The tornado. Crazy bitches riding around on bikes with little dogs in baskets. Got a got a couple partners of mine. I went, one of my buddies out there. I can't remember what unit he's in with the scout platoon out there in Oklahoma right now. I don't know if he's watching this. If you are, holla at me, buddy. Went to m Slick together. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where's your cutout? No, okay, Strini, I tried to make your guy, and I got to fix your hair. I struggle with making it as beautiful as it needs to be. But I tell you what, by the end of the week, your cutout will be on my shelf, and I will send it. And if you want, I'll bring one down there to you, down there in Florida, if you get to make it down there. 50 mile per hour gust, Jesus. That's why I just stay bald. You can't get no hair piece 50 mile per hour gust. Blow that shit off. Look like a rat crossing the road. That's crazy. What's up, Bryant? You doing? Look at right here and Bryant chiming on. What's up, partner? Now, Strainy, I'll get you up there and I'll send you a picture. What's up, Al? Down there, down there in Australia, buddy. You doing all right? Yeah, Brian. It is. It is hard to recreate. I bet Strainy's here. I bet. He, I bet he was. <laughs> if Strainy was was up there and then fifty mile per hour winds, his hair wouldn't even move, would it? You just hear a whistle <whistles> as it cuts through those hairs. Just saying. How you get that much rank and you still get to wear hair gel? Isn't that against, isn't that against regulations? Isn't that a trend setting haircut? I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, I rank me, so, you know, I'm saying this with my arms behind my back. I'm just saying. <laughs> I like watching these EOD boys bust each other's balls. I remember they're like, we put a bunch of peroxide in our hair at the nurse unit. And our um, Sergeant Hunt said that we had to either shave our, our um, heads completely gone or trim it back so he couldn't see it. Back in the day, you weren't allowed to do anything that was kind of trendy in that haircut. Everybody just wanted a high and tight. I'm pretty sure I never saw anything, Sergeant Hunt, anything but a high and tight. What's up, sir? How you doing, Shakur? My man. Good to see you, sir. Oh, yeah, man, we got all kinds of people on here. <laughs> Straighty, why are you up at 242? Sweet Jesus. Only time I got up at 20242 is to take a poop. I usually been in bed by four hours at that point. Hey, hey, Rick, are you coming? Are you coming to the uh, to Florida, or are you not going to be able to come to Florida? Snowing in the bright, Lord. 
How is it snowing? Man, it's going to make you mad, but it was like 70-some degrees and beautiful here today. My little man showed up, flew in from Michigan with his honey, took off to a wedding. It's been a pretty good day. What's up, Dennis? Good to see you, buddy. That's because the Army's getting soft, Gallagher. The way I see it is everybody should just have high and tights. Now, I would probably only say that because I don't have no hair anyway. And plus, I shave my head, which probably could be considered a trendy thing too. But you don't want to see me let this hair grow out. It's like a donut wrapped around my mouth. Look like Jean-Luc Picard. I immediately get 30 years older. It ain't nothing nice. Air salt, Keith. Air salt. It is hot at Fort Bragg, Evans. I'm in North Carolina too. Pretty warm today. Pretty warm. It's gonna rain like a biatch tomorrow, though. <laughs> oh man, got a high and tight. Hey, it's easy to maintain and wash this little melon. All the way, Ray. Doing all right. <laughs> well, the good news is, Strainy, that you've ended up getting enough rank in these organizations that you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want. Hook. I'm, I'm, I'm going out on a limb and saying nobody on here can tell you what to do. So drive, a, drive on there. Drive on. All I know is I just want to I wanna get a picture of it if I ever get to see it in person. Maybe I'll get a tiny little, little top just fit in that, just slide it in between those hair follicles. I didn't even know that MPs used to be able to enforce regulations. We put that in a script on this one we're working on right now. Pretty much it was just first off a tune sergeant handing you that ass or your team leader in the lurch unit. Alright, drive on Brian. Wolverines, my man. Wolverines. What's up, Vincent out there in SoCal? What's the weather like out there? I'm sure it's sure it's warm. Never trust a guy with a high and tight. Well, that ain't good because I I had a high and tight for a long time. Long time. Seen y'all some of those pictures of that young Joe. Young Joe Little Top. Wasn't really Little Top then. Little Cherry Top. Oh shit, 32 minutes. We made it past our time. Well, alright. Um, as usual, make sure you check out the YouTube and Facebook site. Um, make sure, hey, real quick while we're on here. Why are on here? Hey. If, if on the on this page, when you, I know y'all follow me, you wouldn't have got this feed. Make sure you put C first, because we got like I got like shitload of people who follow, but like I don't think you know now that Facebook changes stuff, my stuff ain't getting out there no more. So every share and everything you can help helps me out. I've quit advertising the whole little top thing. I figure we just in it to win it and see where it goes. Now I'm gonna try and just do more in person stuff. But do me a favor, anytime you can share it, let somebody know. <coughs> if you need some, holler at me. Let me know. If I can do it, I will. I've had some people call up and want some custom artwork done. Some of it I can do, some of it I can't. Some of it's kind of hard. So it's kind of limiting. Um, <laughs> sorry, Rick. I'm not trying to get you in trouble. What's up, Jesse? You doing all right, buddy? Let's see. Didn't, what's up? JOTC instructor at Fort Knox. Well, good, man. Good. Good for you. That's a pretty sweet-ass gig. All right, Strainy, get some sleep. I apologize to your wife. Tell her I'm sorry. Get some of that rest. About to get some myself. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Hey, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate it. I appreciate you following me. If you need anything, holler at me. First start another top at gmail.com. I may try and sneak in an early morning live show this week. We'll see how the schedule's going. Um, next Saturday, probably can still do a show. Friday, I'm off my little girl's birthday, so we'll see how it goes. All right? Y'all take it easy. Good to see everybody. Whoop. Anybody got any questions? All right. Toons hard to take charge of your platoons.